Welcome back to FTB Infinity Evolved Expert Mode, episode 24. And we had some audio corruption last episode, unfortunately, and as you'll see, uh, well, this video is going to come out on probably Christmas midday UK time, or really early morning on US time, so Merry Christmas for those who uh, celebrate it. Otherwise, happy holidays, if you have a holiday. If not, I'm really, really sorry, if you press especially if you're in retail. Um... Yeah, so I'm just going to briefly cover what happened with the audio corruption. Unfortunately, it's a hardware issue. I've ordered a new piece of hardware that should arrive today, so the next episode, um, hopefully, should... Well, this is what I'm guessing to be the audio problem, is the USB interface that goes between my microphone and my PC. So let's hope that's the case. Anyway, um, it only happens occasionally. I'll try to check each of these clips before I actually compile them all and upload them. We'll see how well that does. So just to briefly cover what I did last episode, I made a nuclear reactor from IC2. Regular, relatively straightforward. Um, this isn't in steam mode, it's in EU mode. And we have this initial chamber. We can expand these chambers with additional... Uh, let's just look at the nuclear reactor. Just cover this off. It has, as part of its recipe, reaction chambers, and you can make those independently and stick them on the sides of this thing. That expands it and lets you insert more items. This episode, we're going to go into the design of what we put in the nuclear reactor for this simple design to start off with. But, as I said last episode, we, we were doing this, the, the chain of oil processing. You want a macerator, we've seen before. On a washing plant, you're going to need to hook that up with water to the back. A thermal centrifuge, which... Um, is a bit of a weird one in that it takes time to heat up and then this light will go green and only then will it start processing and you'll see there's there's some some processing going on there and that should be enough for me to start the reactor at least and then a canning machine lets us uh you know well we have to take this craft it let me just show you that because we're going to need it anyway. Uh, this is Elmer stand with a redstone block underneath it. Shift right click and I end up swapping all my clothes at once to be safe when handling uranium. And once the reactor is running I think you'll need this to get near the reactor anyway. <laughs> That's why I'm intending to surround it eventually with hardened glass. Uh, I can't remember if it actually damages when you're near it or not but uh, it pretty much should do. <laughs> <laughs> it was following uh, the normal way of doing things. So you're going to go into the crafting inventory and let's just... Um, this is the recipe that we want. I've made four of these already, so just so you didn't have to wait and watch these on screen. And um, actually, I'm only going to need one more of these because I'm going to take one out. And let's just put these back in here. And then go to the canning machine. Drop that in, and then it should actually can this. Assuming it's not going to run out of power because... Yeah, this uses an awful lot of power. Um, it's running out, running out. No, there we go. So that is six uranium fuel rods, and that's what we're going to need to start it up. So make sure you make at least six. Now, you could put that straight into the nuclear reactor uh, anywhere you want, really, but um, it probably wouldn't be good. <laughs> it wouldn't be good at all. It would start heating up, and then it would uh, basically explode eventually. We don't want that. What we need to do is craft um, another series of components that shall go inside this inventory, which will make it safe to use. Now those components um, are not terribly hard to make. They're just requiring, well, I've put lots of auto crafting in, so I don't have to wait for these things. But the first thing we're gonna need is seven overclocked heat vents, I think they're called. Yeah. And to make those, we need seven reactor heat vents, which need seven heat vents. So we need to make this recipe first, seven of, which is iron plates and iron bars and those. So I'm going to need seven. And they don't stack, of course. So yeah, do bear that in mind. Six, seven. I am going to need more heat vents than this, actually. In fact, uh, I'm going to need 10 eventually, but um, that's fine. Well, I'll come back to that on the separate uh, stuff. So we're going to take these heat vents and we're going to surround them with copper plates. Uh, why aren't you letting me click? Oh, you are. You're just... <laughs> They're nearly identical. Okay. 
Ah, and I'm out of copper plates. Okay, so I had enough for four. I'm going to need enough for three more. Fine. So copper plates. So at 16, 18, I'm going to need. And let me just take these ones while that's actually processing and show you how we're going to set these up. Oh, I need them out of copper. That's probably why. Copper. Uh, it's probably because of the type of copper. This is one thing I do find annoying. I think I'm going to have to do some kind of... Is there an old dictionary? Is there something like an old dictionary uh, converter? No. Let me know in the comments, guys, if you know there's, if there's a way to convert these all into the same type of copper um, without massive reprocessing. Because we, <clears throat> we should be able to do this. If I just take 20 copper... And that should come through shortly. I'm going to take this and just shove this in to be processed into plates because they'll all come out the same kind because uh, we're going to put them through an IC2 machine. But the logistics pipes, when you put them in with the the crafting logistics pipes, like let's say this rolling machine, uh, if we got the crescent hammer for a second, <clears throat> uh, I'm not actually configured that one yet. Um, yeah, so let's say here. So I've got input of a copper ingot of a particular type. However, I've put a copper ingot of a different type here. It's not going to work too well. It's going to try and put two of the things in. I don't really have an option to say this type or this type or this type um, that I can see. So if you know a way of doing that, great. If Otherwise, if you know a way of quick conversion, also great. I don't want to have to reprocess all the copper. But um, I may have to. I'm still wearing this suit, aren't I? Yeah, okay. So... <laughs> Inside here, what we're going to do is a fairly simple reactor design. We're going to make a cross with these. There's going to be one there, one there, one here, and one here. Um, we will get to that shortly when I get my copper plates. I'm also going to need um, component parts, of which there are two kinds. Component heat vent, which is one, which is one we need the heat the heat vents, because they still... <laughs> They still require me to make heat vents to start off with. Um, and then surround them with tin plates and iron bars to get the component heat vent. But also, component heat exchanger, which requires a heat exchanger, which requires electronic circuits and more copper plates. So I am going to have to make more copper and tin plates, it looks like. So let's see what we can actually get uh, to in here, or what I'm going to need. Certainly to heat tin plates and certainly more electric motors. And I've only got one electric motor left, so yeah, what I may do is as I have those heat vents and I need three of these component heat vents and two of these quantity heat exchangers, I may well just reuse those up and uh, get some tin plates. Uh, I have already have some tin plates. Good, I can make these. And my heat vent. Okay, so we've got three component heat vents, and um, what was the last one? These are heat exchangers, which are going to require... I'm going to need ten more copper plates, two electronic circuits, and... Is that a tin plate? Yeah, so... Okay, in fact, let me go get those copper plates, reuse those for this recipe, hopefully, <laughs> and then uh, I'll come back and actually sort those out. Where did I put them? There they are. So hopefully you like the nuclear reactor design. I am sorry about the audio corruption last episode. If you have any thoughts uh, about the design in general, feel free to let me know. Um, all comments are more than welcome. Um, I'm trying to circuit. I only have enough for one. Let's just order another circuit. This is probably going to require more copper. I'm trying to circuit. I require two more, please. Oh no, that was successful. Okay, no problem. So, heat exchanger is one. Uh, what I need for the advanced version is just gold plate, isn't it? So, ha, I did make these ahead of time. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, there we go, one advanced. Uh, for those of you who, uh, in fact, uh, I had a commenter who was saying that, um, why don't I make compacting drawers for the, uh, the storage drawer system? I am going to be, that's what this uh, setup is for. I just need to craft some more bits and pieces, and I'll show you those probably next episode. 
Um, and to give you an idea of what's coming up, what I'm heading for with all of this, with the idea of nuclear reactor, is first of all to a tesseract or some other way of storing it. Uh, what I may well do initially is use this redstone energy cell because it holds 20 million RF. That in turn is going to let me hook this up to one of my assembly tables, probably just the assembly table once it's filled, just on its own. Sorry, the lasers, I'll cut them off from the rest of the system to make a resonant energy cell, which will then let me turn around and start making things like ender chests and um, I don't know if the Tesseract recipe needs them. It's an awful amount of uh, teleporters. No, it doesn't. Uh, I don't think so. No, it doesn't. But this does. <laughs> Look at this, the ender chest. Ender tank frames require a machine frame. You get eight of them for this recipe, which is great, but this requires 50 million RF. So that's a lot of power. <laughs> um, in fact, it's probably the resin energy cells... Uh, size, I think. Resident energy cell. Eight, that's 80 million, so that's just above. I could make one of those as well, but I've got a feeling... Well, I can upgrade the redstone one. Uh, that's not too bad, actually. It requires emeralds, but I can get those from the villager. Yeah, that's actually... I might well do that, because having it all in one, you know, solid container for, for reuse, and I can reuse uh, immersive engineering to convert between EU and RF, because I can just attach a connector to this. This this golden um, cable, by the way, is just hook, hooked up to this MFE. Uh, it's underneath, just so that once this actually starts powering, it will build up a full charge inside of here so that I can do further uranium. Right now, I'm having to re uh, use this to generate a, a tiny amount, like 500k RF by comparison, which gets used up immediately by these machines and very quickly. So I've had problems trying to get this many uh, fuel rods out. So just bear that in mind if you encounter the same issues. Oh, while well, I'm here, I may as well put these in. So uh, I think I'm going to want these something like here here and here i think that's correct and then the this one is going to go here there's going to be an equivalent one that goes there let's go and see if uh those electronic circuits are ready and then i'll craft the final three overclocked uh heat vents and we should be able to get this going um okay so we've got those we've got more of these our circuits yeah Ah, yes we are, yes. So heat exchanger, that's fine. I'll take that and craft it. Clear this recipe, and then we want the overclocked ones, don't we? So we want... Uh... These, which needs more copper plates, of course. And I'm only going to have enough for one. <laughs> I need to put more copper in. Never mind. Let's get another 20. And, uh, in fact, no, I'm going to need the heat vent recipe itself first, so... This... Uh, I can never remember it. Oh, it's motors. Yeah, I'm going to need to get more motors crafted. Fair enough. Uh, and iron, uh, iron plates, is it? Yeah, so let's just order iron plates. And I'm going to want eight of those. And I'm going to want, let's make a couple more motors. I did rob them already from my uh, my turning table, so I can't reuse that one, I'm afraid. And let's, uh oh, I'm missing a tin item casing. Fine, I'll do that off camera. Uh, heat exchanger. Advanced heat exchanger. So, yeah. Let's go and put this in place. So you see that the rough shape now, all these are going, six at the bottom are going to be fuel rods. Everything else here are going to be these reactor heat vents. And by the magic of editing, you should see those filled any time now. Now, the bright sparks among you may have detected that I was using reactor heat vents. I actually said overclocked heat vents, and I do mean that. So we do actually have to 
craft overclocked versions. So isn't too terribly difficult, just some gold plates. And, and we should be done. And I'm wearing my suit. Yes, I am. Good. So let's get the fuel rods. And let's start this thing up. Hopefully. <laughs> Without killing ourselves. So here we go. It's a cross shape at the top. Now, I'll, I, I may well go into what these are, what these do to the reactor later. Um, because this is a very simple design, I'm just going to keep everything straightforward and just put them in to the reactor. And do I need a, a lever of some kind to start this? Hmm. I wonder. Do I have a lever? Oh, of course I don't. <laughs> do I even have a stick? That's rebar. All right, leather and leather. So some of you, while I'm getting this, may be wondering why I'm building an ICT reactor in the first place. Um, you may be saying, hey, why don't you just build, you know, a, a regular big reactor? Because big reactors are great and great and exactly. However, yes, this is expert mode we're talking about. If I was on a normal <laughs> pack, this would be fine. However, on expert mode, um, big reactor. The fuel rod, Eulorium, needs RTG fuel, which needs IT2. Yeah. Now let's try that again. Oh. Now, very faintly you should be hearing a clicking noise. Yep, so I'm guessing that is going to give out radiation. So I need to surround this with hardened glass sooner or later. But it's outputting 100 EU per tick, and core temperature is staying low, which is exactly what we want. And you are getting power, which is powering up all the machines pretty fast. And everything is great. So now we should be able to connect up this. Um, to the input side, and hopefully this will give us power. Hmm, maybe it needs to be directly to the reactor then. Let's see if this works. Yeah, there we go. So all that's been pulled out, which is exactly what I wanted. And I can walk through wires apparently. And these are still getting power, probably enough. Yeah, because I don't need these all the time, and it's going to process these out. Now, I did show you the big reactor fuel rod. What is this RTG fuel? Well, radioisotope thermal generator is the, uh, <laughs> the expansion of RTG. And it's made from dense iron plates and plutonium, which is made from tiny piles of plutonium, which is made by extracting depleted uranium. Our reactor currently has normal uranium, but over time you'll see the, I think that's the MBT or the metadata, I can never watch where way around it is, is actually changing. Because these are going to deplete over time, and once they're used, we can use them to create plutonium, which creates RTG, which we can use to build a radioisotope thermoelectric generator which isn't too terrible a recipe and is effectively going to produce us free free power not a lot of it I mean 32 u per tick but it's free so that that'll be useful over time we can build a bank of those I think but that same kind of fuel is used elsewhere what is it used for well with mox which will come on to come on to later it's the source for iridium and iridium is the top end IC2 metal. Also, iridium happens to be needed for a bunch of other things, including the angel wings. Six of them, in fact, which is actually a lot. So just bear that in mind. Uh, as well as lots and lots of other things. Wow, Dark Solarium Thruster, Advanced Electric Jetpack, Resonant Flux Packs. Yeah, 
So do bear in mind, we need this to get to our angel wings. We can also use it for other things. Um, uh, there is the armor, of course. Uh, can I actually get to... Let's just go back a second to plutonium. Yeah, that's how we get the mox. We mix plutonium with uranium again. That gets us mox, which is what we use there. That has the mox recipe. Yes, yes, yes. Is there anything else? Ah, yes. It's also needed for the, the RTG fuel is also needed for the creative energy cell, which is getting the other. That's the real end game goal. At that point, you've got enough energy to do anything. So <laughs> do bear that in mind. So, yeah. We have to go through IC2, which means we have to go through IC2 nuclear reactors, and this is a completely safe design. You'll see these durability bars going up and down. Basically, I'm not going to go into this too detail, but they're, they're actually trading heat around and, and doing things like that, and venting it from the casing, venting it from the components. Um, more importantly, this is a safe design. Other designs actually will use these up, so just bear in mind, depending on the design you choose, you've got to be a little bit careful. And that's already far more. In fact, let me just see if I can just increase this to max. Yeah, it's not going too much higher because it were actually limited probably either by the MV cable or via the output of the reactor itself, which is on a 100 EU per tick. Even if that was like 10 RF to uh, 1 EU, that would only be, you know, obviously 1,000 RF per tick only, which was the limit I set to before. So, yeah, don't worry about that too much. And you'll see this is charging up, but not very fast because, yeah, it's all been hoovered by that. And I'll then use that maybe next episode to uh, show you um, that resonant frame. I'm not going to watch that on camera. It is going to take an awful long while to do. But we now have a working nuclear reactor, which is great. The next thing we're going to head to, and not necessarily in this episode, we may have to set into the next episode. I think I'm going to finish this episode fairly quickly. Uh, in that um, I've had a couple of really long episodes lately and I don't want to over overburden you, particularly on Christmas, with a huge long episode uh, or your holiday celebration of choice. So, yeah, uh, just put that in mind and um, next episode we'll you know head on to some more topics. But just to give you an advanced preview of what I'm going to head for is the advanced miner. The advanced miner is our first kind of semi-automatic mining system. It's not completely automatic in that it will mine, I think, a 9x9 area or a 17x17 17 area, depending on how it's configured. Um, but it uh, stops us having to go and do it manually. Um, there are a few items in here that we have to make, like an MFE and a mining well. But none of them are too troubling. We've made all these before, apart from the teleporter, which is new, but really only requires... Um, usual, usual stuff, and diamonds. Diamond here, these are a part diamond. Uh, advanced machine casing, that doesn't need diamonds. Yeah, some more signalum. So, you know, that can be made, and so too can the rest. So what I'm probably going to do is, between the episodes, I'm going to make all these components, and I will go and set up the uh, advanced miner, Maybe with that first batch of power I get on the energy cell. Using some more immersive engineering to hook the two up. And let's see if we can get that working. Because at this stage, you know, 24 episodes in, it is a slower pack than normal. However, it would be really good to get into um, automatic mining. Which is going to force me into upgrading that purely tiny little system for processing ores. Um, yeah, I'm, uh, it's in the wall now because I've moved the floor level down. So I do want to actually change that. And my frame rate's terrible for some reason. I'm not quite sure why. I don't have anything else running. It may be something... It, mm -hmm. I don't know. I'll have to check that out anyway. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this episode. I hope you enjoyed the summary of the last episode where there was audio corruption. We've now got a nuke being built. It's straightforward. And I will... Um, uh, surround this with hardened glass probably between the episodes. I may even design a doorway probably here or something like that to stop me from actually accidentally killing myself by walking in here without this suit. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed the episode. Like if you li liked it. Dislike if you disliked it. Thumbs up, thumbs down, etc. 
subscribe if you want to see more of these episodes or feel free to follow me on Twitter at GreyDuster for announcements of these episodes and you're more than welcome to ask me questions there as well as YouTube comments. And of course, comments are the most important part. Feel free to leave them, ask questions, make suggestions and uh, we'll go from there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next episode with more of that.